All right, so I want to talk about behind the scenes footage uh, while capturing a lot of the interviews for this documentary, Journey for Justice. My name is David Newton Apoko, too, and my involvement in this documentary, um, I'm the cinematographer, I'm also uh, the director and the editor of this project. And it is, as far as I'm concerned, this is a very eye opening project for me. There's a lot of things that I've been learning because, number one, I grew up Christian background. And a lot of this project is, uh, deals with a lot of Muslims, uh, African Muslims, Somalis. So this is like, even though I grew up with a lot of Somali friends, this is still uh, an eye opener to me. Because, you know, traditions, cultures, everything is different, but yet the sa uh, everything is the same. And what I mean by that is unity. We are all brothers and sisters. and whenever something is happening within our community, we all get our voices out and try to help each other. And that's pretty much the theme that's been flowing through this project, even though there are many other themes. But what I'm giving you right now is my, to say uh, behind the scenes, kind of like a vlog format, but this is like a director's behind the scenes of how it was like shooting this project as a cinematographer capturing and giving a cinematic lens to the story, but also what it's like to uh, be behind the camera and hear these stories about these communities and how it also trickles down to other communities. So that's what, that's what I'm gonna be doing right now, just my, my, my uh, thoughts and emotions and feelings and how it was shooting this project. So, the first time we, we shot, um, once we got the funding from StoryHive and let the go-ahead for this project, Journey for Justice, um, Muhammad Accord from the Takalusa Institute was very ready to go. He was very, very ready for this, to, to, to get this project started. And I'll give a little history of, of this project. In 2017, I actually met Muhammad through Rene Bourgeois. Uh, from the John F. Center for Peace and Human Rights, and um, she wanted me and Mohammed wanted to work on a documentary piece to talk about the things that he was going through, trying to bring awareness to certain issues that's been happening in the Somali community. Now, when this was happening, um, you know, at the time, this I felt, and later on, Mohammed felt later the same that the scale of what we were trying to tell was really, really big and very, very dynamic, with a lot of things going on. So. We had to put that on hold. Fast forward to uh, now, 2022, um, we applied for the StoryHive funded uh, Black Creators Edition and got the, the funding. Now we can tell this story. And I'm very excited for this, um, even though this is a very emotional project. And I'll get into that uh, later on once I talk about how we had certain shots. Now, how I'm going to do this, I'm going to talk about the shots that happened because I recorded a lot of these shots with my cell phone of behind the scenes. So not only did the interview happen and then I had either myself or I had a, a someone assist and shot some behind the scenes stuff and that's what I'm going to be kind of talking about and highlighting. So the first behind the scenes thing I want to talk about was when we went to Guto Cafe with Muhammad Accord. That was the first time we, I conducted an interview with him on camera and it was a two camera setup and I used two lenses. One was at the time was an 18 to 55 millimeter lens, just a stock lens and another one was a 50 mil. And I wanted to get a close up and I also wanted to get kind of Muhammad in his own uh, environment where he's comfortable to tell this story. And that's what the 18 to 55 mil lens did. And um, the purpose of this was also to get two shots kind of cutting in. But as time went on, when I looked at the footage, I was more happy with what the 50 mil was giving me. It was a much more uh, close up and a much more intimate uh, scenario where Muhammad goes in detail about this, about uh, advocacy work. Now in this shot, uh, there's a shot where the camera is going through one viewfinder, then it goes through another. In this shot, Muhammad at the time was talking about why it's important to have allies. Allies, especially when you're trying to advocate for your community, it's good to have allies. That way you can have a bigger platform. Uh, you can get a, uh, uh, your voice more wider. 
depending on who you ally yourself, align yourself with. And that was where Muhammad introduced, uh, when he met uh, René Bourgeois and Kelly Tamaklo. The interesting uh, thing that I found uh, later on, especially with uh, what Muhammad was talking about when it comes to allies, that also became a piece of the theme for the story. Because Muhammad was just an engineer who just got out of school and he came, from, came back, he went to Africa for a while and came back and he saw a lot of changes within his community and he didn't know what to do. So that's when he told me that was when he started to, to, to get into advocacy work where he can talk about what's been going on in his community. So yes, the next uh, shoot that was conducted was with uh, Chief Kelly Tamaklo, the six, and he was formerly on the Edmonton Police Commission and he is also an ally with Muhammad. And it was a very interesting shoot. Um, first, I'll talk about what was it like meeting Kelly. He was very, 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 very friendly, very opening. Um, I'm also uh, part Ghanaian. He is from Ghana. My father is from Ghana. So we connected right away. And it was pretty heavy because, you know, Muhammad and Kelly, they were voices for their community. And it's a great thing to see black men, you know, leading that charge, you know, talking about issues that's very important within the community and, and try to find ways to solve them. So when I met with Kelly after we talked about um, uh, meeting up and also talked about the past, my team worked on a bunch of good questions to ask Kelly to really dive into this project and dive into what was, uh, what was, basically needed to be head needed to be uh, basically diving in and what needed to be heard and what needed to be said so the questions were very very good and I thank uh, my team for that and uh, Kelly when I emailed him the questions he was really already prepared for it um, he also had Muhammad give him a few uh, pointers and in, in certain parts and clarification and yeah we were ready now when I he had an area in his home which we conducted the interview um, it was a very beautiful home, which he welcomed me. He said, you know, my casa, your casa was very, very comfortable. Um, I was quite nervous because this was an interview that I had to conduct by myself. And I, I did a two camera setup for this interview, one using the 50 mil lens, which I had on one camera. And I used a 24 millimeter lens to capture a wide shot because there was a, a, a setup in his house where he does a lot of camera interviews. And this was a quite interesting setup because it looked very, very, very awesome. It, like, he looked like he was sitting on a throne and he was uh, dressed out in traditional uh, 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 clothing. And it was, like I said, the interview went, went quite well. There was a few hiccups that I won't go into, but um, at the end of the day, it was an eye-opening thing because, yeah, he talked about, you know, how everything in that community, you know, needed a lot of attention, even though he's from Ghana. Kelly and uh, Muhammad is from uh, Somalia, they both connected in, an, in a way where this is an issue we're living in Canada and this is an issue that's affecting community. So let's unify and let's, let's solve this and let's get to the bottom of this. But they're basically, they, they formed a, a quite a good friendship and also worked towards solving the issue that's been happening in, uh, in, in uh, Muhammad's community. And it was a very interesting interview. I, I, I learned a lot, um, I captured quite a bit. Like I said, there were some hiccups, but at the end of the day, a lot of good things that Muhammad uh, and Kelly, they said a lot of good things that really inspired me as a, as a black man, as a way to stand up for your community and give a voice. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about because the next day, because when I did that interview with Kelly, uh, the next interview was well, not an interview, but it was a trip that we were doing with Muhammad Accord, and we went to the Muslim cemetery. And this this was a heavy shoot because the purpose of going here was to basically respect and honor the dead. Um, according to Muhammad, there's a lot of youth, Somali youth, that has been buried there, and uh, they've passed through uh, unjustly manners, but. They were buried there. But Muhammad, because there was so much snow on the ground, it was hard to find, uh, they were covered 
a lot in snow. So Muhammad visited a relative and he paid his respects and I captured that on camera. It was, it was pretty uh, intense capturing that because I felt in a way that this was a good way to open up the project. We open with prayer. Um, that is something I'm going to bring to Muhammad's attention to see if he's cool with. But this was a very interesting shoot because, like I said, um, I just captured a lot of the footage. Uh, I, first, I'll talk about how it was done. Now, um, I sped up the camera to... Uh, I'm not going to go into specifics which camera, but I sped up uh, the camera in 50 frames per second. And put on a really wide angle lens, which was the 24 millimeter lens. And I tried to capture it as cinematic as possible. So if this was to open up the project or to open up the documentary, it would be a good way to open up with prayer. Like we are opening up with prayer to honor those who have died, whether it was unjustly or they died from natural causes. This is paying our respects to them. And so that's what Muhammad did and capturing it from different angles. That way I had a lot of, in the editing table, a lot of room to cut and paste and piece together a story. And that's what uh, documentaries, for them to really have the cinematic uh, 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 flair, there has to be a storytelling. Every scene, every interview has to have a purpose to let the audience know, okay, this is what's going on. Okay, this is very interesting. I'm learning this. So I felt this was very good to capture. Um, there was another work colleague that was there that captured a lot of me capturing the footage of Muhammad. So she captured a lot of behind the scenes footage and it was very, very good. And it was a good moment. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is, which I'll have uh, my colleagues talk about it, but I'll just brush up on it. We had time to do a lot of planning and kind of get everything organized with the rest of the team. Um, I'll let them introduce themselves, but uh, we have a very good team that's been working on a lot of aspects of this project, such as social media. Um, we have two, uh, not only helping me guiding the story as a script, but also working as a consultant in how to, how to work with the community. Because like I said, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Christian raised person, I'm not Muslim. So a lot of good people working on this as well. And I'm going to let them introduce themselves. But as the director, cinematographer and the editor, even though there's going to be more footage and more of these doing this coming, this is quite an educational and captivating uh, story that I'm capturing so far. And that is the project, the documentary, Journey for Justice. Yes, my name is Hanan Atitala and I work as an education coordinator primarily um, along with other things at the John Humphrey Center for Peace and Human Rights. And with Journey for Justice, I've been kind of contributing a lot with assisting with the scripts. Um, I kind of help to create in collaboration with my teammates um, the, the questions and the general flow of everything um, based on what I can offer. Or, anything like that. So, and also with the town hall meeting, I've been also playing a large part with setting that up and, and getting things in order um, with Renee and the other teammates, of course. And other than that, it's whatever is needed. So playing also that versatile role as, you know, the director needs me to. Like, what do people like? I'm trying to ask, how can you be an ally? So not just in JHC, but in a way, how can we help in this situation? Should that be two separate questions? Do you think so? What is, I don't know if you're seeing the page. Definitely. So with something like this, obviously the more representation is great. I'm not Somalian, but I am um, black woman. I am, um, I am Muslim. I am very familiar with the Somali community. I've been privileged to work with them and befriend them. So the more representation, the better. Um, and also having people that have been familiar with the issue in, in some way is also great. Um, so in my regards, it is something that affects my community as well. My community is not as large in Edmonton, but it also affects other black communities. Like I've had to go to, an, an, to various funerals because of this issue. So it is something that sits 
that you know touches the heart for me as well. And it is Somalian people and the community are also people that I consider close to me as well. So um, it is important because then you approach it with the respect that it is needed. So I try to do my best there. And here's another question, kind of a follow up to that. So <clears throat> have you ever worked on a script or a documentary before? And if not, what's the experience like so far if it's your first time doing it? Um, no, I've never done anything in regards to a documentary. Any script I've done was more um, black history shows or things where it's production, like live production shows. Um, and that's where it's more done. It's more theater, theatrical. But this is the first documentary and it was, it was easy because I have teammates that I'm very comfortable with. So I'm not, I don't feel scared to when I see a red flag or I see language that I don't agree with or I see something that we shouldn't maybe touch upon or we should touch upon. I'm very comfortable to say my piece and that's what it requires. It requires honesty with one another. So it was very easy to do, but it was also tricky because it's a lot like I've never done this technical stuff, so even seeing how much work goes into it and even speaking, I'm very, you know, very nervous when it comes to public speaking and media. So it's made me confront a lot of fears and challenges I have and also really appreciate what goes into the development of media documentaries and, and anything of that sort. So you need teamwork and you need to trust your team members. Um, and you need to make sure they understand your perspectives on this. So somebody's skill set and their perspective, although valuable, will vary from yours. And that's where the teamwork comes in. It's understanding what we can bring to the table based on our own experiences, skill sets, and our kind of outlook on work itself, how we approach work. And, you know, our, so that's, I think, is why and it also motivates you it makes you want to do the work it, it makes you look forward to the work so yeah teamwork is very important and especially for me i'm somebody who really needs that teamwork so hey everyone my name is wen i'm one of the mentees from the journey for justice documentary um i've learned so much through this experience and i'm here to share a bit about what that looked like so far um so far i've been able to create some promotional materials through my own um, background in radio and podcasting um, and create some really cool snippets um, to showcase the interview we did with Muhammad. Um, and Dave, our incredible mentee, has also been able to teach us some technical skills on filming, um, lighting, post-production, editing, um, design sets, and um, all the components of telling a really compelling story. Um, I think I learned a lot about storytelling through this process so far, um, not only um, those technical aspects, but how we create emotive and um, meaningful connections with the people um, in this project that is um, really important in this documentary, um, that it represents the community's voice. Hi everyone, my name is Esther and I'm one of the mentees uh, that Dave is mentoring for Journey for Justice. Um, so far there's a lot of things that um, Dave has sort of uh, journeyed us through and taught us. Um, so one of them being um, setting up lighting, um, uh, setup design, um, and kind of assembling all the equipment, so putting together cameras. Um, showing us how they work um, and how to adjust um, for proper lighting um, and as well as um, just sort of the behind the scenes um, processes of um, documentary making, um, the everything that goes behind um, interviews, etc. things like that. Um, and we've also started um, taking a look at um, editing so um how to um change color so that um two um two videos uh that are maybe captured from uh different cameras or different angles um look seamless and they look like um like visually they look the same um and also uh during the town hall um 
again, we kind of learned about um, camera setup, um, like the best um, and most optimal angles um, in terms of capturing the subjects. Um, and yeah, so far it's been um, a really um, informative um, journey and I've been really enjoying my time sort of learning um, everything that, that we've been covering so far. Um, yeah. One of the things I want to talk about, which was a very uh, interesting and very uh, awesome shoot, was the one that we did when we interviewed Rene Vujois. Now, what was interesting and very fun was I had I got to mentor uh, some people, and that was um, uh, Wen and Esther. I got to mentor them, and they got to set up the cameras and uh, 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 shoot the interview uh, with Rene Vujois. Another thing that we did was we also did set deck. We wanted to create something that was dynamic and also something that was very creative and that would add to the set when we interview Renee. And that's what um, uh, Esther and Wen and even Nexi helped out and, and worked on the set deck. And then we set up two cameras. And that was where the fun parts came. The cameras were um, pretty much straightforward. We had everything hooked up. We were using the power. We weren't using the battery because we are using Black Magic, and they're very infamous for having a low battery life. So we had everything plugged in. So we had a lot of power, and yeah, we conducted the interviews, and everything went pretty well. I was very happy with the results. And I also showed uh, Esther and Wen some, uh, a few short uh, uh, things on how to do a lot of the um, editing in a rough draft or not a rough draft, but a rough version of how to color. And that was very exciting. Now I wanna start off with, we did this event, it was the town hall. And everyone uh, who was a part of this project worked very hard to put on this town hall. And in this town hall, we had uh, not only the Somali community, but we had people from the indigenous community and just people who wanted to get their voices heard. Now I wanna start off with during the town hall, um, it was very awesome, especially because I mentored um, Esther and Wen, but they were operating uh, two of the cameras and I was operating a third one, and we captured a lot of the content and everything turned out pretty well. I was very happy with the results of it, and um, there was a lot of impactful statements, impactful quotes that was from the town hall. I also recorded the Q&A, and this town hall was, in my personal opinion, um, there were a lot of things that I liked, but um, I felt a lot of people got their voices heard. And it was a very uh, educational thing for me. Um, it was an interesting thing because it was in person and just getting out of the conditions we had with COVID, it was very good to get out there and just, you know, uh, put on uh, an event for the community. So uh, tell me your name and what are you doing for this project exactly? I'm James Stratton Crowley and I'm composing some music for the documentary. And what documentary is it for? Journey for Justice. And what is this? This is a piano piece in F minor or something. <laughs> Hi, I'm Shogun Agile, and um, I did uh, some of the scores for uh, Journey for Justice. Uh, there's one particular one that I did, and it was um, for a specific scene um, that uh, David showed me. Um, it was a uh, it was like a suspenseful, a lot of suspense in this certain scene. I think they were they were gonna give out the the verdict, so I wanted to create something or compose something rather uh, that had that suspense feeling to it. Hi there, uh, this is Renee Bourgeois from the John Humphrey Center for Peace and Human Rights and uh, just uh, doing a quick reflection on the town hall, Journey for Justice town hall that happened um, on May 14th at Buchanan Center and um, when I think back there's two 
key things that really stand out to me in the town hall. The first being um, that I think it's very difficult um, when you have uh, law enforcement in the room and there's only so much they can say but there's so much the community wants to know so the, the, the questions will continue to come at them and it um, you know starts to create a, a space where they really have said all they can say and um, just attention gets diverted away from the topic um, not that that's uh, I just think it, it I'm stumbling here I just really think that uh, with law enforcement um, when we invite them into spaces and they're uh, not kind of those people with decision-making capacities um, that it's we have to find a balance of how much we let the attention go to them rather than focusing the attention on the families um, and the stories and so um, the mothers of course will kind of sit more in the background and my, yeah, that's my other takeaway is you know the mothers really need that space with law enforcement safely in a space that's comfortable for them to ask questions to be part of the conversation build that relationship um don't think there's a safe place for that so already the guto mothers cooperative um and eps are starting to talk about hosting some spaces there regularly just for women to come EPS being available um, from the specific session around homicides and making sure that uh, those are being addressed. So fragility in law enforcement, not just fragility, but you know, when you, when a law enforcement officer is continually kind of questioned and they can't say anymore, it starts to create a response that comes more from a trigger and a, and a, a bit more of an unhealthy space. Um, and so we have to be just conscious about how we um, engage our law enforcement officers. So. Those are my reflections on the town hall. Um, looking forward to the journey ahead. Thanks. Hello everyone. My name is Wen. Um, I use they, she pronouns and I'm part of the Journey for Justice um, crew. And I'm gonna give my reflections on the town hall event that we had a few weeks ago. Um, I was part of the video crews uh, with Esther and Dave. So I helped operate um, one of the cameras closest to the speakers um, and to capture footage and audio um, with the help of Dave, our mentor. Um, this event was really um, interesting, um, important, and I think um, showed us where our gaps were as well. I think we got a lot of perspective of um, legal professionals about um, about the case from their perspective um, and I think we also sh uh, saw how we were missing a lot of voices from the community themselves from the loved ones impacted um, and solutions that our community um, collaborated upon so I think um, this town hall provided a really good launching pad and coming together of people to help us um, shape where we're going to go forward. So I hope to um, see where it goes next and I'm really excited um, about the developments um, to come. Um, William is also an advocate and he is a huge supporter for uh, his community and his family because his uh, relatives, uh, Jacob Sansom and Maurice Cardinal, were gunned down uh, uh, in Alberta, and they were searching for justice. When uh, William came to our town hall, he expressed how him and his family were doing everything and they can to fight for justice because they were going through the courthouse or they were going through the court system um, probably within the next day after he came to our town hall and told us what was going on with his family. And I was lucky to be uh, capturing footage. He invited me to come down, capture footage, capture content of the people who were supporting him, and also capture his reactions, him and his family's reactions when they came out of the courthouse. That was very important and um, very 
eye-opening for me because they actually got to see justice even though it wasn't exactly how they wanted because one of the charges on one of the men that gunned down their relatives um, got a lesser charge but at the end of the day they were happy that these men will be facing consequences who killed uh, Williams uh, members of his family um, big thanks to William for having me come down there and take that footage I also had uh, 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 someone help me out Jackson Bell humor who's also a Métis filmmaker and he captured a lot of good content a lot of good angles it was very moving to be a part of and I'm glad that uh, not only did I have someone help me to capture this but I was very glad to be a part of it and that is my um, up-to-date uh, behind-the-scenes diary of the project Journey for Justice.